Hi, great off. Welcome to trigonometry part six. And today I just want us to focus on proving and applying the sine, cosine, and area rule. I know that you learned this in grade 11, but although there might be some of the learners who didn't do this in their grade 11 due to COVID, then we're just going to cover it in this session. Okay. Okay, let's quickly start with the area rule the area rule right so this is a rule that you definitely use in order to calculate the area right the area of a non right angle what of a non right angle triangle for example if i just have a non right angle triangle there and i want to calculate its area I know that if that triangle maybe was a right angle triangle, it would be easy for me to get the area because we know the formula for area, right? For a right angle triangle, the area is what? Is 1 over 2 base times perpendicular height, right? But what if I have a non right angle triangle? How do I calculate the area? And I'm just going to quickly show you here. We use something called what? The area rule. So it is used to calculate the area of a non right angle triangle okay okay so how do we know that we have to use the area rule so in that non right angle triangle for example if you have a non right angle triangle abc let me just sketch it this side i have a non right angle triangle abc then i must have at least two known sides right for example, I must have the length of uh, AC, maybe, and also the length of what? Of CB. Uh, so we must have at least two known sides and an included angle and an included angle there. So we must be knowing the value of that included angle and those two known sides. Then the following area rules can be used to determine the area of that triangle okay so take a look at these three formulas that i wrote it's it's quite or less the same uh so here it's just that the different is their sides right so what you need to understand if i have a triangle okay let me just draw it properly here if i have a triangle a b c what i can do in order to name this length i can follow its corresponding angle then i just use a small letter right so its corresponding angle is a so this side then this side that is facing a it will be small letter a so that is the length of of that side the cb it can be represented by small letter a for example this one the corresponding angle is b so that side it will be represented by what by small letter b there okay can you see then lastly this side uh, the corresponding angle is what is c then this side will be represented by by small letter what by small letter c so how do we determine the area using the area rule so the area rule say that uh, the area of a triangle abc so remember whatever that i wrote here these are areas areas of triangle abc say right so for example if i am given my side a and i'm also given my side b obviously i must have an included angle then the formula will say one over two uh one over two as you can see here one over two a b sine of the included angle so it will be sine of c so that's the area rule uh for for that triangle there, right okay what if i'm just only given uh maybe uh, uh uh a and c and an included angle in the triangle the side of a and and, and the side uh, which is c and an included angle b it means it's going to be one over two c a sine of what sine of included angle which is b right so let's take a look at this last one if you are given only the side b and side c then obviously and an included angle you'll say what you'll say 1 over 2 b c sine of a you can see that really it's simple to use this formula just say 1 over 2 the sides uh those opposite sides and then included angle there then you will get the area of that triangle okay okay let's now come to the area rule proof 
and and here i'm just gonna show you how you can prove uh or derive this formula for area rule that we just learned in the previous slide uh and this is examinable, right? So you need to know how to prove this area rule because they can also ask in the exams to, to maybe prove it, right? So uh, the question will go like, given triangle ABC, you can see triangle ABC there, with sides A, B, and C, you can see that the small letters there represent the sides. And the question says, prove that the area of triangle ABC is one over two, b c uh uh sine of a right sine of what sine of a is one over two b c sine of a so how how do we uh prove this uh area rule right remember we need to prove this formula to say the area of our triangle a b c is this one so before you you prove obviously you're gonna start with what with your construction right so you start by constructing what do you do you construct your perpendicular height but not from the vertex of the angle that you you that that's in the formula that you want to prove what do i mean it means that i can't construct my perpendicular height from my vertex a right there because uh a is is part of the angles that uh that are needed in the formula so i can choose any vectors except that that of an angle that is given there so what i will do i'm going to construct um, a perpendicular height h and this was a b c and i'm just gonna name this point my b uh, i mean my d right d because it's a b c d and this is what this is my perpendicular height there so let me just delete this small letter b here just to to make things uh in order there okay let me just delete that and like that okay so that's what you do for your construction i'll just write it down to say on my construction i constructed height uh height uh from uh so it's height h from b to to d of of the base what of the base ac right so i constructed the height h from vertex b to d uh which is in in our base ac right so that's my construction then now we can come to the proof now how we can uh actually prove this formula okay okay you'll notice that in order to prove this uh what you have now here you have what you you have your right angle triangles right you have two right angle triangles and you know that if i have a right angle triangle i know the area for calculating what a right angle triangle right so what's the area for calculating a right angle triangle don't forget that this length was what this base was was b was small letter b because uh it's 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 corresponding to to the angle b there okay so the area for a right angle triangle obviously i'm gonna choose the area of a right angle triangle which is on this side where there is angle a right so so that i i, I can just uh, be able to to relate those things so my area of a uh, triangle uh so it's area of triangle a b c a b c k so i'm just gonna calculate the area of the whole triangle area of triangle abc now that i have a perpendicular height i can use the area rule to say it's one over two what is our base our base is b you can see b is our base multiplied by our perpendicular height which is h so that is the area of triangle abc can you see okay so now i know the area of triangle abc is equals to 1 over 2 b times h right we haven't proven that thing we just proven some parts 1 over 2 b so we must get c uh, sine a but you can see that in triangle a b d can you check triangle a b d it's a right angle triangle so we can use trigonometric ratio right whenever you have a right angle triangle you must think of using trigonometric ratio to say what sine a is equals to what opposite over hypotenuse do you know so sine a is equals to opposite with each h uh 
over hypotenuse, which is my small letter C. So I can solve for my H by cross multiplying to say H is going to be equals to C sine A. Can you see? So this will be my equation one and this is my equation two. So I'm going to substitute equation two into equation one. Then I can get my area of triangle ABC to be 1 over 2 multiplied by B. Where there is H, I'm going to substitute what? C sine A. Then we've just proven the formula. So it's very, very simple to prove area rule. You just need to know that you construct a perpendicular height, get the area for the whole triangle. Now that it has a, a perpendicular height, it's 1 over 2 base times height, then go and, 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 and use your trig ratio for that angle sine A opposite over hypotenuse, then cross multiply, replace, then you'll be able to prove what? To prove that formula there. So that's basically how you prove a uh, area rule. So let's quickly go to the examples. Okay, so this example will help you to understand how we can apply that area rule uh, in solving um, um, uh, problems related to it. Okay, so it's area rule examples. Okay, number one, it's this diagram here. They are saying find the area of triangle PQR. They want the area of triangle PQR. Ch take a look at PQR. It's not a right angle triangle. Then we have to think of what? Of the area rule, right? So the area rule has uh, conditions to say there must be at least two sides that we know and also an included angle. And we can know, we can see from triangle PQR, there is uh, two sides there that we know and also an included angle. So to find its area really it's going, it's going to be simple because we're going to say area of triangle PQR, it will be equals to what? 1 over 2 multiplied by that side which is PQ or I can just call it, uh, okay, I can just write PQ, just not to confuse you, multiply by what? By RQ, then what? Sine of the included angle, which is sine Q. So that's the formula. So to be 1 over 2 multiplied by 7, multiplied by 8, multiplied by sine of 64 degrees. Then we can just use our calculator to get the answer there. Okay, so the final answer will be, 25.17 so it was centimeter we know that area is squared so it will be centimeter square right because area is, 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 is square unit so to be 25.17 centimeter square as the area of uh, triangle pqr okay let's let's focus on on this one number two okay so for number two also they say find the area of triangle a b c and there's a condition restriction to say correct to two decimal place so we want now the area area of triangle a b c can we see so before calculating it we must make sure that we have two at least two sides and also an included angle right so here we have an angle of 50 degrees can you see and we are given that this side is the same as this side it means here we have what we have seven also as 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 the as the length of that other side but you can see that if we use this side and this side we'll have to use this angle and we don't have this that angle there so our first step really is to go and determine that angle right so if you can check this triangle is an isosceles triangle where we know that the base angles must be the same uh because of uh uh equal side and also uh, opposite uh, equal angles right so they must be opposite equal angles. so there is also what is also 50 degrees sum of angle of a triangle must give us 180 so we have 100 degrees it means there is what is 80 degrees but i will not just write all those things when i'm calculating i'm just doing it now for the sake of time but you on the exam if you are given such a problem you have to show them that angle c is 50 degrees because uh, of base angle of a sourceless triangle or you can use that reason to say it's because uh uh uh, uh, they are equal uh, sides uh, or uh, opposite equal angles, right? So uh, then there you can go and solve for angle A, which is 80 degrees. So now I have my at least two sides and also an included angle. I can calculate its area is 1 over 2 multiplied by what? It will be multiplied by AB 
multiply by AC sine A, right? So it is 1 over 2 multiply. What is your AB? Your AB is 7. Also, your AC was 7. Then it will be multiplied by sine of what? Sine of 80 degrees. Don't forget, they say run off your answer to two decimal place. Okay. Okay. So the final answer here will be 24.13. So there was no unit there. So it will just be square unit, unit, uh, unit squared. Right. So that will be the area of, of that triangle. Okay. Okay. Let's now focus on the sign rule. The sign rule. Okay. So, so the sign rule it is used to calculate the lengths, the length or the lengths, right, or the angles of of a non-right angle triangle, right. So, for example, if I have a non-right angle triangle there, and I want to determine its length, right. Remember, we said the area rule is for calculating the area, right. So, of of a non-right angle triangle. So now the sign rule. It is used to calculate what the length and also the angles uh, we can also determine the angles of what of a nine right angle triangle okay so it has two conditions right you don't just start calculating but you must be having the following things in order to start calculating so we are saying the sign rule can be used when the following is known in a triangle right one there must be more than one angle and a side right so in in your in, in your in your non right angle triangle you must have that you have at least uh one angle and and a side right so that's the first condition another condition you might also uh be having uh two sides right you can be having what your two sides and what and not an included angle maybe it can be somewhere there not an included angle as in like in 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 the area rule. if you just have two sides and not an included angle you can use it maybe um to to calculate the angle and you can also use it again to calculate what the side so that's the sign rule so what does the sign rule says here is it, it says sine of a divided by a remember the small letters are representing the lengths that are corresponding to this angle in the triangle right so maybe if i can draw a, a non-right angle triangle and i call it a uh, b c i know that this will be a this one that is facing there will be small letter b and this one will be what this side will be c so it's saying sine angle a over what over its its corresponding i mean its corresponding side right so it's sine a over a is going to sign b over b which is going to sign c over c so this one we use it for calculating an unknown angle right if we want to determine an unknown angle we use that formula but you can also use it to calculate the side depends but uh, i'm just giving you this so that you can uh, just uh, use a, a quick method in that sense okay so then we also have this formula here you and and you can see this one we are starting with the side right we are saying side over sine a side over sine b side over sine c right so this one we use it to calculate what an unknown side right that's why we are starting on on the side on the numerator and we are starting with uh with with a trigonometric ratio that include an angle so that's why this one we're just gonna use it to calculate the angle but you can use uh both of them can be used to to i mean one of them on on top of them can be used to to calculate both the angle and and the side right so but hence i i, I just said i'm just giving you this so that you can just use a fast procedure like that okay let's let's quickly go to the proof and just to help you to know how you can prove uh this rule so this is the sign rule proof and you'll be given a triangle abc with the sides a uh, b c and they want you to prove that a sine a is equals to c sine c it's still sign rule right although they didn't put the whole uh thing there but it's still sign rule it's a over sine a is equals to c over what over sine c let's see it's a over sine a so the angle here they choose a and they also choose angle what angle c here right so 
uh, before if if you want to prove this uh, rule you must start with what with construction you start with construction and what do you do you are going to construct a perpendicular height that do not uh, intersect with uh, the the vectors of of your angles that you are given there so it must not come from c it must not come from a so definitely to come from what from b there so i'm constructing a perpendicular height a b c so this will be my d and and this is my h so i'll just write for them that i constructed my height h to base what to base a c and and uh, it's it's joining there to d right it's on d there. so after constructing that i can go to the proof now right i can go to the proof so there are two ways in which you can prove sine rule right uh but let me just show you one way uh, uh the other one i'll just leave it uh i'll just show you one way but maybe i'll show you the other way i don't know when but for now let me just show you one way in which you can prove this sign rule so in order to prove it it's very very simple what you do now is uh you want to prove this rule right so you know that uh, after your construction you now have two triangles right angle triangles right so from right angle triangles we know that we can use the trigonometric ratio to say sine of a right to say we can now say sine a it will be what opposite over what over hypotenuse so it will be equals to h over c i can solve for h so my h is gonna be equals to c multiplied by what by sine a and that is my equation one right so that is equation one so secondly also i have sign c there on my proof so i'm going to say sign c sign c it will be equals to opposite which is h over what over hypotenuse which is a that length there so i can solve for h also here it will be a sine c and this is my equation what my equation two can you see that equation one and equation two are the same i equal so you can say equation one is equals to equation two because both of them are equals to what they are equals to h so i can equate equation one and equation two because both of them are the same as h the right so uh what is my equation one it's c sine a and what is my equation two uh my equation two is uh it's a sine c right it's a sine c can you see so then in order to prove that one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide both sides uh by what by ac i'm just gonna divide both sides by ac so that i can have uh, the corresponding angle and the side uh, being corresponding this so i divide both sides by ac then after dividing both sides by ac i do it on the left hand side what you do on the left you do it also on the right so c will cancel with c i'll be left with sine a over a which is equals to a will cancel with a i'll be left with what with sine uh sine c over what over c so sometimes they can ask you to prove that one so uh you'll just end up there right but now they said that we have to prove it like this so in order to prove it like that uh what you can actually do you can apply the reciprocal both sides right you can apply the reciprocal both sides so if you apply square root of minus one to this side you must also do it on the uh, to the left side you must also do it on the on the right side so i'm just gonna take this here because of space we don't have space there so what i will do is i'm going to apply the reciprocal on both sides so in other words i'm going to apply a square root of minus one and what i do on the left i'll have to do it definitely also on the right hand side after applying reciprocal what it does it will swap those um, that fraction so the denom denominator will be numerator and numerator will be what will be denominator then i'll be left with a over sine a is equals to c over what over sine c then you have proven your sign rule there that they wanted so that's basically how you you your sign rule okay let's go in and now take a look at the examples okay let's let's now look at sign rule 
examples and and number a it says determine x right determine x so you are given a non right angle triangle there and you have the angles and you also have what you also have the uh, uh, the side there x that you want to calculate okay so how are we going going to use the sine rule right so our x you can see is the length ac right so i can start with it to say x over according to the sine rule i'll say x over it's the sine of its corresponding angle so it will be sine of what 135 degrees is equals to i'll look for another side also that has its corresponding angle and that is 16 so it will be equals to 16 and its corresponding angle is what it will be the sign of its corresponding angle it will be the sign of 21 degrees and i can just write in front that this is my sign rule if they need uh, any reason so uh, i'm just gon gonna solve for x i'll do it i'll cross multiply that sign that 135 will go there so my x will be equals to 16 multiplied by sine 135 degrees all divided by what by sine 21 degrees can you see then i can solve for my x using the calculator okay so the answer of x will be equals to 31.57 so it's 31.57 so you can see that really we have used our sign rule in order to determine what the length of the side in in a non right angle triangle and this is basically how you do it okay let's quickly look at uh b okay for b they are saying determine theta so here they want the angle right they want the angle determine theta so notice that they won't tell you in the exam that use sign rule use area rule or also the last one that we're going to focus on use cosine rule in order to solve for what one. they'll just give you a diagram so you have to go and practice a lot in order for you to be able to know that whenever i just have a non right angle triangle or even if you have a right angle triangle like that you can use these rules to determine the areas to determine their lengths their sides and also the angle so in order to think in that way when you are given a problem to just think of using the sign rule it will come the more as you practice and practice more questions right so that you'll be able to connect to say okay if i just have this triangle i can use the sign rule because sign rule is used to determine the length right sign rule is also used to determine what the angle so in order to have that kind of thinking you need to be practicing and practicing a lot of questions related to these rules right okay let's quickly go to b so on your b here and this is this was our a right so on our b we want theta right so we want theta so we have our theta has its corresponding sides right can you see it's uh it's 23.5 which is the length and we also have another length there that has its corresponding angle so we can use what we can use the sine rule because we have two sides uh and and an angle that is not included can you see so it means it can that kind of idea can give you a hint to say you can use the what the sign rule so uh to to get uh theta there i'm using the sign rule to say sine theta divided by its corresponding size which is 23.5 then it will be equals to what sine 19 degrees and its corresponding size which is 12.1 and i'll just write sine rule right then i can go and solve for my sine theta i mean for my theta by cross multiplying to be 23.5 oh sorry about that 23.5 multiplied by sine 19 degrees divided by 12.1 right just gonna patch a calculator to get the answer for this one so my sine theta will be equals to let me check so it will be equals to 0 0.63230178176 uh, i'll just copy everything so that i'll just round off my final answer okay so let me put that on top sorry about this it's just that there's no space i'm gonna solve for theta by saying arc sign my answer here which is 0 0.63 what 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 there right so theta is going to be arc sign my answer there 
which is going to be 39.22 degrees so that is your angle theta so you can see we used our sign rule in order to get what to get the angle um, and and that's basically how we do it okay okay cosine rule so this is our last rule on this session so cosine rule i can say it's more or less the same as sine rule but the only difference is that uh obviously their formulas are different because this one obviously has to have cos and the other one is about sine and, and, and the formulas are totally different actually but both of them are used to calculate the what the length and the angle of non right angle triangles right so if i have a non right angle triangle and i want to determine uh the length its length one of its length and 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 one of its um uh, angle i can use the cosine rule right so the cosine rule can be used when the following is known in a triangle and this is very very important that you know right and you'll be able to internalize this the more and more you practice right so the more and more you practice you'll be able to internalize this that okay in this such case i can use cosine rule so what is the case if you have all the three sides if you know all the three sides the length of the three sides there if you know them think of the cosine rule right number two if you have two sides and an included angle so if i have this side and this side and an included angle i can also think of what the cosine rule i cannot think of the sine rule because for the sine rule the condition say if i have two sides and not the included angle that's where you're gonna think of the sine rule but with the cosine rule if you have two sides and an included angle you can use it right so yeah let's let's quickly go to it so in any triangle a b c you have your triangle a b c there so the cosine rule say uh, a squared this side squared a squared is gonna be equal to the other two sides squared minus two you multiply the two side you say cos of the angle facing that your a squared so uh, that is relating to a it's cos of a can you see so that's the cosine rule uh, you can say a squared is equals to what is equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc then the cos of the included angle which is the cos of a can you see so that's the cosine rule or someone can say b squared right it depends what you want to calculate so b squared then b squared will be equals to what to a squared plus c squared minus 2 a times c cos of what cos of b or someone can say what someone can say c squared can you see c squared is goes to what a squared plus b squared minus 2 a b cos of what cos of c so that's what we call the cosine rule and let's just quickly go to the proof now okay cosine rule proof so you are given triangle abc with sides a b and c if we can see they are saying prove that a squared is equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2 bc cos of a right minus 2 bc cos a so uh they, they want you to prove this and this is the cosine rule right so obviously when you want to prove this you start by construction so on your construction you do the same thing the same approach you don't have to affect angle a so uh, I don't need to do my construction from that angle so I can do from any vertex there except a so I'm just gonna construct from B to this base here AC right and I'll call that H uh, then I know that the whole length here is B can you see the whole length is what is B I'm gonna let the side that has this angle a to be X don't forget that just gonna let this portion from here to there to be what to be x and it means this portion now because the whole length was b then this one will be what b minus minus x so basically that's what you did ah, let me just write this clear because i see like it's not really uh 
clear there. Okay, so we know that the whole portion is B. So I'll let the side that has X, I mean, that has my angle A there to be X. Uh, so I'm letting this side to be X. So definitely this one will be B, the whole B minus that X, right? So this one is B minus X. Okay, so on my construction, just for my height, uh, from B to base to base AC, right? So that's what I did on my construction. Let's now go to the proof. Now, let's go to the to the proof. Okay, so in proving it, you can see that in in whatever we have to prove uh, as as part of the cosine rule, we have the square, right? So you have to think of 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 something that will give you a square in in this side so you have right angle triangle and you can use theorem of pythagoras right so on this triangle here i can say a squared is equals to a squared plus what plus b minus x squared because we just made that to be b minus x squared so and this is really by what by pythagoras right so i can expand that to say a squared plus what b squared minus 2bx plus x squared so this is going to be my equation one so i just use theorem of pythagoras to get my a squared right so now the second thing that you can do you can also use theorem of pythagoras on the other uh on the other uh triangle here so what will you do uh, uh let me use black color also I'll say c squared hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, right? So to be what? To be h squared plus x squared. Can you see? So plus x squared. So what I can do now is uh, now I have my c squared is equal to h squared plus what? Plus x squared. So I can solve for h squared, right? I can now come and solve for a squared to say a squared is going to be c squared minus x squared and this is my equation what my equation two i can now go and substitute my equation in two into equation what into equation one so where there is h squared i'm gonna put c squared minus x squared so i go back on my equation one where there is h squared i'll put c squared minus x squared then i copy whatever there was there b squared minus 2bx plus x squared right so you can see x squared minus x squared they're gonna cancel i'm left with a squared is equals to c squared plus b squared minus 2bx can you see so i can say this is my equation three or or, or something like that so i'll just leave it there okay so now in order to prove i'm just left with few things i have my c squared i have my b squared a squared perfect 2b is there so i just need to go and solve for that x can you see how can we do so we need to get cos a remember this is a right angle triangle so we, we are allowed to use trigonometric ratio to say cos a what is your cos a it's going to be adjacent which is x over what over hypotenuse which is c so when i cross multiply to solve for x my x is gonna give me c multiplied by what by cos a can you see x is c multiplied by cos a so now i can go back to my equation here and substitute my x when you immediately substitute your x you're gonna definitely get that formula there and that's how you you prove the cosine rule so it's it's also basically simple right so you just follow this procedure and 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 that's how you prove it okay so let's quickly go and look at an example okay cosine rule examples so the first one number one it says determine x right so what do you have you have a side another side and an included angle right so you know that this is the condition for cosine rule we can use cosine rule right how can we determine x by saying x squared is going to be equal to the sum of the other side squared to be 10 squared plus 9.6 squared 
uh, minus 2 and we multiply those sides 10 9.6 then we say multiply by cos of the angle uh, that is facing that unknown that we want so it will be cos of what 85 degrees okay so very simple i can use a calculator to solve for this so i'll just apply the square root of that so it will be 10 squared plus 9.6 squared minus 2 into 10 into 9.6 cos 85 degrees so i can get the answer for x right okay so the answer for x will be 13.24 units so that will be my x there okay great let's let's now move to number two so the question says determine angle a right what do they want they want angle a so what do you have here you are given all the sides so and and this is really from the condition for cosine rule to say we can use it uh in uh in a case like this so you are given all the side five eight seven and they want angle a right so angle a is corresponding with what with seven can you see with seven can you see so i can just use the cosine rule to say what to say seven squared why am i starting with seven squared because i know seven will go there and give me cos of a because it's corresponding with that one hence i'm using seven so seven squared is going to be equals to what five squared plus eight squared minus two you multiply the other side five times a then cos what cos a then i can go in and solve for my cos a right and get the angle so it's seven squared if i take that one that side minus five squared minus eight squared uh uh is equals to minus two into five into eight cos a right so i can divide both sides by minus two into five uh into eight then this one will cancel out this one i'm left with cos a also this side i had to divide with minus two to five into eight then i can just punch a calculator to get the answer for that uh, so the answer will be one over two so cos a is equal to one over two to get my a i'll say arc cos one over two then i get my angle a as uh, i think it's 60 degrees let me check arc cos uh one over two yes it will give me 60 degrees because that one is a it's a special angle so let me put it somewhere on top my angle a is gonna be what 60 degrees so you can see we simply used the cosine rule to uh calculate that okay okay great stuff uh i think that's all for today thank you very much for joining me in this session this was part six where we were focusing on proving and applying the sine cosine and area rule thank you very much for joining me watch out for part seven and i think that will be our last uh, session i'm not sure on trigonometry if whether i'll also cover uh, trigonometric functions uh, i'll see how it goes but watch out for part seven where i'll be showing you how you can use these rules now uh, uh, in 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 we just basically be treating some past papers i'll just take some questions from past papers on this topic where i'll just simply basically be showing you how you can really calculate that uh, using the combined knowledge and so on so thank you very much for watching and that's all for today enjoy the rest of your day don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel that's all for me and goodbye